don't clap too soon. Um, <laughs> because I'm talking about money. And I know that a lot of you would rather me talk about sex, because um, you told me that last week, and I thought that was weird. But uh, we're going we're gonna to continue on being, being generous this morning. If you want to grab your Bibles, if you brought those with you, turn to Luke 12, and uh, your sermon notes are in your bulletin, and they're on the back of your bulletin. If you want to take those out, you can follow along and fill in some blanks on the back of your bulletin. Luke 12, verses 13 through 21, this is Jesus encountering a man uh, who wants more money. And so verse 13 starts like this, someone in the crowd said to Jesus, teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. Jesus replied, man, who appointed me a judge or an arbiter between you? Then he said to them, Watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. And Jesus told them this parable, the ground of a certain man, certain rich man yielded an abundant harvest. He thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, this is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones. And there I will store my surplus grain and I'll say to myself, you have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool. This very night your wealth will be, your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? Jesus said, this is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves, but is not rich toward God. Ouch. <laughs> I mean, ouch. Do you feel the twing? It's funny sometimes how you can read from the gospel and the words aren't very gospel-y. Have you noticed that ever? This is one of those sections from Jesus where he's talking about generosity and he uses a parable about greed to make us think about our relationship with money and with one another. Let me just tell you a background here quickly. In Jesus' day, uh, if you went to the courts and you said, hey, I want my brother to settle the estate with me, and you didn't get the answer that you wanted, you could go to a teacher, a rabbi, like Jesus. And that's exactly what this guy is doing. He's coming to Jesus because he didn't get the answer from his brother that he wanted. And so he comes to Jesus and he says, I want you to tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. Now, when you, uh, in, in those days, uh, when you were in a Jewish family, the inheritance was divided unequally, okay? So the oldest son received a double portion of the inheritance. So if there were two sons, the older son would receive two-thirds of the inheritance. And the purpose for that was to keep the name and the family secure in the Jewish culture, and so this man comes to Jesus, and we assume that he's the older son. And he says, tell my younger brother to give me the rest of the inheritance, basically. Now, I totally get this, because I am the eldest brother in my family. <laughs> and I'm sure there are lots of reasons that we don't hear about, like my younger brother's not too smart. Amen. Can I get an amen for all the older brothers? I'm like, my younger brother is not as smart as me, obviously. By the way, my younger brother, is, his name is Luke, and he's a pastor in Arizona, and he can watch this online. <laughs> so I'm not going to tell him about this sermon. But you can imagine all the things that this guy makes as an excuse for why he wants Jesus to tell his brother to divide the inheritance with him. But Jesus knows the heart, doesn't he? Jesus always knows the heart. And of course, Jesus sees the greed that's in this man's heart. And so Jesus tells a parable about this farmer. And the, the issue that Jesus brings up, the issue of generosity in this story is really not about money. It's ultimately about the heart. The issue of generosity is not about money, it's about the heart. Because Jesus says to everybody, watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Notice he doesn't say, be on your guard 
against having lots of money. Jesus never says that. Never. In fact, the Bible never says that. The Bible never condemns rich people, wealthy people. Instead, it condemns people who are greedy, who think of all the things that they have as theirs. And Jesus says, life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Is that not the antithesis to the American way, though, on some level? Let me say that again. Life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. Now, I have to apologize here. Um, I sent out a letter last week or, or this, this week, and I, I said in there that we'd be talking about the elephant in the heart. And so I came in Monday morning, and I told the entire staff, I said, we are not talking about that. Change it up. Here we go. And which I think they kind of freaked out, and I think they said, they looked at me like, oh, boy, another one of these types of pastors, right? <laughs> you know, they changes his mind at the last minute. So we're not talking about the elephant in the heart. We're talking about the popcorn effect because I couldn't get out an image in my mind, an image of the fact that my son Theodore loves popcorn. <laughs> he loves popcorn and he doesn't like to share. And I love popcorn. <laughs> and I don't like to share. And so I thought, isn't that interesting? Popcorn is a whole lot like money. <laughs> and I thought, you know, this is a great way to talk about money because it's hard to share popcorn. That's my son wringing my neck, <laughs> wanting more popcorn. So that's what we're going to do this morning. We're going to talk about popcorn, and we're going to talk about popcorn as if it's money. You know, it's hard to share popcorn because we're afraid there won't be enough for us. You ever notice that? We're afraid there won't be enough for us. I can look at this huge bowl, and I will tell you right now that this is not enough for me and Theo, okay? This is only enough for me. I grew up in a family of four, and if you grew up with a, large, a larger family, you knew that supper times meant you better eat fast, because there might not be enough for you. And we treat our money like that, don't we? We look at our bowl of popcorn, our bowl of money, and we're concerned about, is there going to be enough for us? Because one of the most embarrassing aspects of our society, and I think it's embarrassing, I, that's intentional, is not having enough money, right? When you have to tell your kids, sorry, son, we can't get that. There's no money for that. Or when you go to the store and you realize there's something there that you want, but, and somebody else is buying it, and then you look at them and you go, oh, I just, I can't afford that. On some level, our society tells us that's embarrassing. One of the most embarrassing moments that's ever happened in my life, and uh, you don't have to raise your hand and tell me if this has happened to you because this is embarrassing, but have you ever gone to the grocery store and you've got all of your groceries lined up and they the, the cash register person checks them all out, puts them in bags, and then, then they ask for your payment, and you slide your card, and you hear that awful sound, that sound that goes, eh, eh. maybe you've never experienced that. Slide your card again, eh, eh. and then the person behind the counter looks at you with those eyes that says, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Do you not have enough money? Do you, what's wrong with your credit card? Have you maxed it out? And they give you those eyes and you start to sweat, right? You start to perspire because the people behind you are like, seriously? Seriously. Those are embarrassing moments. It's happened to me because I've actually overspent. I had a grocery store one time and I slid my card and there was no money there because I forgot I had another bill that I paid for. I had to leave all of the groceries there. It's hard to share popcorn because we're afraid there won't be enough, and I think that honestly we're embarrassed by it. It's hard to share popcorn because, number two, we made it. We buttered it and salted it. It's ours. It's ours. That's how most of us think about our money, is that we look at what we make 
from our jobs. We look at what we have and we say, that's mine, it's mine. I made it, I worked hard for it. I deserve this. I remember as a, as a young pastor, I had only been a pastor for two years. I was at a congregational meeting. The congregational meeting didn't go that great, but it wasn't that bad. But one of our top givers came to me out in the parking lot where all great conversations are had outside of a church building. And he said to me, you know, Pastor Paul, if I stopped giving to this church, this church would crumble. That's what he said to me. I kid you not. And as a young pastor, you just grin and bear it, okay? You just say, okay, well, thank you for, for giving. And you go home and you say, whew, okay, that was rough. And the next day, he showed up at my office again. And I thought for sure here I was going to get an earful of what he doesn't like about the church. But instead, he came into my office and he shut the door. And he sat down in front of me and he said, Paul, I need your forgiveness. He said to me, you know, my money is not my money. It's God. And I need your forgiveness for saying the things I said to you. I will never forget that conversation from such a humble man. He understood that he might have buttered and salted his popcorn, but at the end of the day, everything that we have is from God. It's hard to share a popcorn because we made it, we buttered and salted it. And number three, it's hard to share popcorn because we tend to love it. We tend to love it. And we don't want to give it away. I heard that Iowa is the popcorn state. Is that true? Is that like a motto? Or is it just because we grow a lot of corn? I don't know what the deal is with that. But we tend to love popcorn. I mean, how many of you love a delicious, buttery, bag of popcorn at the movie theater. Yes. And if you're like me, I, I, don't, I haven't been to a movie theater down here yet, but I like the movie theaters that have your own press the button for as much butter as you want. You ever experienced that? And if you're at a movie theater where they do it behind the counter for you, you have to stop them halfway through the bag and be like, more please. More please. A big buttery bag of popcorn is amazing and we tend to to love it. We tend to love money, too. The Apostle Paul writes to Timothy in his letter, first letter to him, he says, for the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Now understand, hear that again, for the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Paul doesn't say money is the root of all kinds of evil. He says the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. When you start to love money more than you love God, it becomes the root of all kinds of evil. Paul goes on to say, some people eager for money, greedy basically, have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. We tend to love money. We tend to love it. By the way, if money grew on trees... What would be everyone's favorite time of year? Right now, fall, or it's going to feel like winter this week, I think. Fall, do you get it? Money, okay. <laughs> Why is money called dough? Because we need it. <laughs> what, what did the duck say after he went shopping? Put it on my bill. Now, my wife told me not to tell any of those jokes this morning. I want you to know that. I like joking about money, honestly, because it's such a serious topic. It really is. You know, Jesus talks about money more than any other subject in the New Testament. Did you know that? He talks about money more than he talks about love. He talks about money more than he talks about heaven and hell. He uses it in analogies and parables. He discusses it often with his disciples, and I think the reason for that is that he understands how serious it is because it causes greed in our life. And we have a major problem with greed. Scripture warns that greed ruins our life and the lack of generosity, the lives of others. Jesus ends this gospel passage 
by saying, after he describes God taking the very life of this farmer, he says, this is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves but is not rich toward God. Ouch. That hurts. How do you feel about that? Are you a little uneasy? You should be. Because our world runs on money. Greed is rampant in our society. We want more and more and more and more. I mean, Black Friday is coming up, you guys. (laughs) Greed has a grip on us. What is it going to take to slip its grasp, truly? And Christians, we're not exempt from this. By the way, statistics show that Christians don't give much more percentage-wise than people who aren't Christians, which is probably one of the most staggering comments about Christians today, is that we're caught a little bit too much in the love of money. How do you feel about this? After this passage, Jesus gives us an alternative to greed. It's really beautiful how the gospel writer Luke sets it up. You see, Jesus gives us this alternative to greed. It's called his kingdom, his kingdom. And I could spend weeks talking about his kingdom and everything that means, but for this sermon, just understand when Jesus tells us that he gives us his kingdom, what he means is that he gives you everything that you need for this life and the life to come. And so listen to these gospel words. I want you to hear what Jesus says. He continues on after this parable, the rich fool. In Luke, 22, in Luke 12, verse 22, he says this. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or about your body, what you will wear. For life is more than food and the body more than clothes. Consider the ravens, they do not sow or reap, they have no no storeroom or barn, yet God feeds them, and how much more valuable are you than the birds? Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to your life? And then he continues down in verse 31, Jesus says, but instead of being greedy, seek first his kingdom, and all these things will be given to you as well. And then verse 32, my favorite verse in this whole section. Jesus says, do not be afraid, little flock. For your father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. I want you to hear that. God has given you the kingdom. All the money in the world will not replace the kingdom of God. The kingdom comes through the death of Jesus Christ when he reaches out his arms on the cross and he says, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing, especially with money. That's the kingdom. You know, we're we're talking about giving here and uh, it is so weird that this is my second sermon, truly. (laughs) We don't really have a deep relationship yet, so you don't know a whole lot about me. I don't know a whole lot about you, and we're talking about giving. I want you to know that my wife and I, we've filled out a pledge card. We've been giving in our marriage since day one, and we have never lacked for anything. Well, except that day that my credit card didn't work, okay? But that's okay. Jesus has given you the kingdom. And so may I encourage you, I know we sent out this letter and I know it's hard to make a decision and and talk to your spouse about giving and things like that in a few short days. So what we've done is we've changed things up around here. We've got a box outside that you can put your pledge into, but we're going to leave it out there for the next couple weeks through all of November because I want you to sit down. I want you to think about this. Actually listen to what Jesus says Think about the kingdom that he has given you through his death on the cross. 
and then consider how you can be generous. Will you guys join me in prayer? Let's pray. God, we thank you for your generosity to us, that you have given us the kingdom. It cannot be taken away. It cannot be bought. It cannot be sold. It cannot be stolen. It has been purchased by the blood of your son, Jesus Christ. And there is not enough wealth in the world to replace it. And so God, help us to be generous and not greedy. Help us to be people who pour out into the lives of others. God, teach us to be generous. In your name we pray. Amen.